I'm not happy. At least I'm not happy enough. Once I had a brain scan where scientists examined my brain activity, they concluded that biologically, I'm one of those people who is prone to be less happy than other people. That's terrible. On the other hand, maybe my unhappiness made me work harder, try harder. I worked hard in school and in my first job because I thought if I was successful, then I'd be happy. So maybe that brought me success in my career, and maybe it's why I have this TV show. Still, it's not worth it. I'd rather just be happy. There aren't many things more important in life than happiness. So I envy one group of people. This group has consistently been shown to be happier than average. Religious people. Why are they happier? The book Buddha's Brain professes to have some scientific answers to why spirituality brings happiness. The author is psychologist Dr. Rick Hansen. So, why? There, there are a lot of reasons. One is that often religious people feel more connected with others and they have more of a sense of meaning in life. Religious people often do specific practices with their own brains, prayer or meditation or related kinds of contemplative practices that have been shown in very solid scientific studies to gradually change the, the brain for the better over time. For example, building up capacities for controlling attention, being more mindful, uh, being more tuned into yourself, and having more ability to put negative emotional reactions in context. But let's break this down. I hear being more tuned into yourself. If you're depressed, you can be tuned into yourself and wallow in your unhappiness. That's right. You can have an extreme sense of being into your own body or caught up in your own emotions, but oftentimes spiritual practice, and again, broadly defined, helps people step back from those reactions so they're aware of them, but in a more spacious and mindful way. So, and, and we know this, this really is true. I mean, it's hard, you can't exactly measure happiness, oh, yeah. but they ask religious people, how do you feel about your life? And they mm -hmm. tend to say, mm -hmm. I'm happy, more than, non, more than those of us who unfortunately on the average, there are, of course, many happy people who are not religious and unhappy people who are religious. But on the average, yes, uh, religiosity, broadly defined, does tend to be a factor of happiness. And uh, the, that is one way they measure it. They ask people questions. This is a, another test that, mm -hmm. that people once did, that they just simply said, which of these is you on this chart here? And you can go from the total smiley face here to the frown. And if you look at the percentages, I find it very interesting that so many Americans, uh, and this is an American test, rate themselves this happy, most people. I put myself somewhere uh, in here, and religious people are more likely to pick the higher number. Now, some people might say, look, it's because you're happy, you tend to be happier if you have social interactions, family, friends, mm -hmm. and if you're religious, you probably go to church, you have more interaction which, with your church mm -hmm. group. Right. Maybe that's why. Most of what affects happiness are factors inside the mind, in people's own psychology. And that's where I think you see uh, people who have a spiritual life uh, engaging those factors. And I think they have lessons to teach people who are not religious about finding a sense of gratitude, for example, in things, a sense of meaning, and as well as being willing to do little practices that are pretty easy to do, where you gradually train your mind and therefore change your brain for the better over time. And Buddha's brain argues that there are little practices that non-religious people like me could do oh, that yeah. would make me happier. One of my favorite is to take in the good several times a day. Just take 10, 20, 30 seconds in a row with a positive experience. No one needs to know you're doing it. And it gradually defeats the negativity bias of the brain, which is like Velcro for negative experiences. Once burned, twice shy. Because that's what our ancestors had to learn to deal with negative experiences. But positive Boy, experiences. Just think about the good. Stay with it. Gee, with I it. haven't, no one's chopped off my arm. Yeah. I feel good about that. For Little things. Flowers are blooming. Your kid still smiles at you. Ain't dead yet. <laughs> Ain't, de ain't dead yet. That's, that's good. Well, 92% of Americans say they believe in God or in some universal spirit. 80% say they pray regularly. And all this helps move people toward happiness. Yes, and it's also important to realize that religiosity um, is a wide spectrum. There are a lot of people who describe themselves as religious who don't participate in organized religion. 50% of Americans, according to the latest Pew report, 
report meditating regularly several times a month. I, I find that I'm, half of Americans are meditating? It is really remarkable. In the last 30 years, there's been a wave of research about the benefits of some kind of mindfulness or meditative or prayerful practice for physical health. It strengthens the immune system. It helps reduce the symptoms of a number of medical conditions. It helps people tolerate the distress, for example, better of things like cancer. It improves productivity at work. There's a recent uh, issue of the Harvard Business Review, we were talking about that, that talks about how um, happiness and mindfulness training actually can go to the bottom line in terms of profit. So I think a company with happy workers makes more money. Yeah, and interestingly, recent studies have shown that practicing relaxation routinely in one form or another actually changes the genes that control the stress response. It reaches down into the genes inside of uh, uh, our neurons and helps make them more effective in terms of uh, us being more able to be resilient in the face of difficulties. Well, I tried transcendental meditation for two years. They said it would make me happier and cure my stuttering. <laughs> it didn't either. I wasted two years on that. I think you yeah, never I'm know. be careful about those kind of claims. Right? Thank you, Rick Hansen. Very interesting. Coming up.